Hello everyone, uh, I'm Russ Boschman from Secure Digital Life and Paul's Security Weekly and I'm here with... Uh, Joe Mignano. Joe Mignano uh, at AnyCon in Albany, New York. And Joe, what do you do? Yep, so I work for Logical Operations. We're a training and certification company based in upstate New York. And um, I manage the channels group. So anything from the certification development um, all the way through to branding um, and other marketing efforts related to our certification program. That's interesting. And I have a couple of questions here. Do you mind if I ask? Sure, go for it. Yeah, a lot of them uh, relate to what exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> um, the first question I want to ask is, what is the most common trait among organizations that have suffered a security breach? Sure. So when we talk with organizations, there's three types of security investments they typically make. There's process, there's technology, and there's people. And whenever we run into an organization that has suffered a breach, they've typically reduced spending on people, right? They haven't kept their people uh, trained relative to the latest security threats in the space today. And why do you think that is? I think it's easy to forget people. It's easy to say that, hey, if we implement these systems and we buy this technology, we spend these millions of dollars, um, we won't need to, to keep our people continuously trained. For an organization, uh, people frequently leave, right? People frequently um, have higher priorities, and it's very difficult to make that investment, both the hard and the soft investment, that's necessary to actually put people through a good training and certification program. Awesome. awesome. Um, which brings us to six. Um, and in training, we talk a lot about different pathways that we can take uh, for training our end users, things like uh, deg college degrees, which can take a long time, sure. um, but certifications, and what, what is your take on uh, certifications? Do they matter? Yeah, well, and, and frequently we'll run into a company that has gone through a training program. We run into one that maybe has actually put their people through a training program, and they always come back with, we didn't get the ROI that we thought we would get out of that. We still had a breach after that after that training event happened. You know, for logical operations, we think that certifications matter because it shows that the employees have actually gone through and, and achieved what they wanted to learn from that training program. More importantly, without that certification, you don't really have the ability to have a culture of security awareness. You take one training class, and after that training class, everyone forgets what happened. If you actually earn a certification or a credential, you're able to broadcast the fact that you're security aware, you're able to put a little badge on your LinkedIn profile, you're able to better foster an environment where cybersecurity is important. And I think certification is, is one clear way to do that. Personally, do you have any uh, suggestions for our audience about types of certs that they should be looking for when they're shopping for certification? Or is the more the merrier kind of thing? Or what, what approach do you take? Yeah, I think for us, uh, we don't want to say the more the merrier, but if I'm talking with an organization, we want to find a certification for each job role. There's obviously numerous certifications out in the space today for IT folks, but what about standard employees? What about typical information workers? What about your sales reps? What about your marketing people? What about your finance people? You know, my advice would be to, to find a certification that all levels of the organization can adopt and ensure that they, that they adopt that cert. Yeah, that's a wonderful policy. I mean, for being certified myself, I, I also know it's it's sometimes difficult if you have a lot of certifications to keep them up. Right. So if you've got 15 certifications, then, you know, how do you, every five years roughly, they kind of like expire, they start turning over and you have to re-up. Sure. I mean, it, that can become cumbersome in and of itself when you're working with full-time jobs and families. Yeah. And there's plenty of programs that allow you to recertify without having to pay extra um, after a two or three year period. And that's a good point. You know, find a program that's user friendly, right? That's cost friendly. Because it is an expense and it is an investment and you want to find one that, that you can use over time. Great. And um, our last question is on user awareness training and how effective is user awareness training and how should it be conducted uh, in your opinion? Yeah, I think a lot of user awareness training happens um, over computer. It's a t essentially an e-learning course. And for us, I think a way to make to make that sort of training more effective would be to do it in an instructor led training environment, in an environment where there's a live trainer in the room. It could be a WebEx room, it could be a virtual room, but a live trainer that's facilitating the class. That allows students to participate in group discussions, that allows unique questions to be asked about the specific organization, and in the end ensures that the training event is personalized and is relevant you know, for the group. Yeah, and, and in education now, we're looking at a lot of this thing called personalized learning environments, um, prior learning assessments, and really, instead of treating students as a holistic, uh, you know, uh, group of people, rather a whole group of people, we're looking at sort of how do you customize the curriculum so that it meets each individual at their level on, you know, on their time, sort of like just-in-time learning. Sure, and especially when we're talking about end users, you know, in IT, it, it's always high stakes, right? We're going to study and we have to pass that exam. You know, for, for end users, we actually 
actually want it to be engaging. We want it to be encouraging. We want it to be positive. It's okay if it takes multiple times to, to pass the exam. It's okay if they have to you know work together in small groups to study and it takes them 30 or 60 days to pass. You know we want that environment where end users feel engaged and empowered, not where they're threatened or they fear actually taking an exam because they don't want to fail it. You know we want them to have questions and we want them to come back and ask their trainer you know more information and ask their colleagues for more information so that they can learn the knowledge we need them to, to learn. Yeah, and, so, and some of the feedback we've gotten from a lot of our students who are, we encourage to take some of those certification exams, you know, they're like, well, I wasn't sure if I was ready enough yet, or I wasn't sure I had, you know, uh, all the knowledge that I needed for the exam, or they're just maybe afraid of standardized tests. Right. I mean, some of them, if you look at like entry level, like SEC plus or A plus, um, sure. you know, Students are, people are afraid to take those exams. And what they'll do is they'll buy a study guide and they'll memorize the responses, right? And we want the exact opposite. We yeah. want them to actually learn this material and view the test as, as a positive um, thing, not something negative that should be feared. No, I absolutely agree with you. And I, I really appreciate you taking the time out of your day to come and interview with us. Thanks for having me. Yeah. It's been fun here at the show. And uh, uh, hopefully we can do this again. Oh, I'd love to. It's good meeting you. Good take meeting care. you.